today we'll be kicking things off with your latest updates on Starship and Boca Chica. Then we'll go over some Crew Dragon current events and future events, some of which include the Tom Cruise. We'll briefly discuss the next Starlink launch, then we'll finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. So SN5 had quite the week, let's talk about it a little bit. Since we last spoke, Hurricane Hannah made its way toward the South Texas site on Saturday, yet SpaceX was still looking to spin up SN5's single Raptor engine for a static fire, sending out notices to locals to beware of the awesome things to come, but ultimately deciding to yield to the incoming tropical storm and thus began battening down the hatches. Now, while the SpaceX crews in Boca Chica may seem to be in the middle of a bad luck streak, trying to get SN5 to leave the ground, some good fortune presented itself when Hannah made landfall dozens of miles north of Boca Chica, sparing the rocket factory from the worst the storm had to offer. And so SpaceX was back at it on Monday, again sending out notices to locals of the epic things to come, but also once again aborting the static fire test before any flamage was created. Elon tweeted he was out at the launch pad and that a connector had been damaged during the storm and was the cause for the delay but was now fixed and might be able to fire later that night. Unfortunately, that wasn't to be. During a later attempt, a fuel spin valve didn't open, which is required to allow fuel to flow to start up the Raptor engine's pre-burner turbines. The SpaceX was also having issues with a thrust vector control hydraulic pump that gimbals the engines to steer the rocket. Not a vital issue for a static fire, though kind of important for a 150 meter hop, but only if you want it to be successful. Over the next several days, more test attempts were scheduled, but none came to fruition. And yesterday, an attempt at the static fire had to be aborted due to a rogue fishing boat, unaware of the test, coming a little too close to the site. Not to worry, they were soon chased off by other angrier boats. But just a few hours later, Elon gave us what we've all been waiting for, boom time. Very clean and he quickly followed with a tweet of an aerial image taken during the test and some inside info that it was a full duration static fire and that 150 meter hop is coming soon. <laughs> and a new notum with the FAA also dropped yesterday, preventing air flight over the site lower than 26,000 feet from August 2nd to August 3rd, which means Sunday seemed to be the expected hop date. And I say seemed because also yesterday, Cameron County canceled the road closings for that day. However, August 3rd may still be in the running. After all, Bob and Doug should be home by then, and I'm sure Elon would like to be around for both events. Meanwhile, work continues on subsequent Starship serial numbers. Nose cones are breeding and making little baby nose cones. And work continues on the super heavy booster high bay. Oh, and the restaurant looks lovely too. Moving on to the topic of Crew Dragon, NASA announced this week who will be the crew for the Crew 2 mission to the space station in the spring of next year. American astronaut Shane Kimbra and Megan MacArthur will serve as spacecraft commander and pilot respectively, and Japanese astronaut Hushai and ESA astronaut Pisquet, nail it, will be mission specialists on this trip. But Crew 1 comes before Crew 2, and it will launch no earlier than September, however training continues in the meantime. Astronaut Soichi tweeted a couple images of his team's water egress training off the coast of Cape Canaveral and an image of their capsule was just shared yesterday where it currently resides at SpaceX's Hawthorne, California headquarters. It is expected to be shipped to Florida in the coming weeks. NASA released a new poster for their mission starring Walker, Glover, Hopkins, and Noguchi coming to theaters never because nobody goes to the movies anymore and it's a space launch, Jack. What's wrong with you? But speaking of movies and space, some new details were shared this week by Deadline.com concerning Tom Cruise's future trip to the ISS for his feature film. The $200 million production commitment granted from Universal Pictures came after Cruise, director Doug Lyman, and a couple others had a Zoom call with the executives. Cruise and Lyman are both experienced pilots and Lyman even went to the Cape to watch Demo 2 launch the other month. The Edge of Tomorrow director will also accompany Cruise to space on the Dragon capsule. But the script has yet to be written. However, the article goes on to state that Elon Musk will also be a partner and is involved in the project. To which he responded, cool. But the Crew Dragon capsule has yet to even complete its first demo trial with astronauts on board. Demo 2 is scheduled to bring Bob and Doug home in a couple days. Here are a few things you should know about their return. Bob and Doug will splash down off the coast of Florida. Their return will take anywhere from 6 to 30 hours. Once in the atmosphere, the capsule's drogues will deploy at 18,000 feet and the mains will deploy at 6,000, 
mm, parachutes. Once the capsule's in the water, it will take about an hour to egress the astronauts, and NASA will provide coverage from undocked to splashdown ranging from August 1st to August 2nd. Those are the current dates. However, they're subject to change depending on whether there is another tropical storm heading their way. After the mission is complete, NASA will spend some time analyzing the data of the capsule, and if all looks well, then the agency will consider reusing her for the Crew 2 mission, along with the booster from Crew 1. Wouldn't that be a hoot? And lastly, SpaceX did put a video up on their YouTube channel this week that goes over their sleeky IVA suit. Feel free to check it out, but for those of you that watched the live Demo 2 launch, it will look familiar. The next SpaceX launch on the agenda is Starlink 9. Like Starship SN5, this poor vehicle has been waiting weeks for some action, and it still has at least another week to go before it lights up. She is scheduled to launch on August 6th at 1.30 in the morning local time. Before we head into our honorable mention for the day, I just want to quickly talk to you about our sponsor for this video, Bony Wright. They are an educational animation channel that looks into various topics such as natural sciences or the events of the day like the current pandemic and protests. Their latest video goes over cell towers and their effect on human health. Now, while my channel doesn't necessarily endorse the positions held by other channels, I do believe that trying to educate yourself on every side to an issue is never a bad thing. And Bony Wright's content tends to be well thought out, honest, and easy to follow. So check out their channel using their link in the description below. Now it's time for today's honorable mention. After years of anticipation, NASA and ULA finally launched their Mars 2020 mission to place their next rover on the surface of the red planet. The Atlas V rocket with four solid rocket boosters in tow lifted Perseverance off the pad at 7.50 a.m. on Thursday. And if that's not a great way to start your day off with a boom, then nothing is. Unless, of course, we're talking McDonald's breakfast burritos and a mimosa. Studies have provided equal results. But I digress. Once the Centaur upper stage reached low Earth parking orbit, she coasted for a few before lighting up a second time for an injection burn toward our neighboring planet. And once that was complete, the space capsule with rover and Martian helicopter inside separated and began its seven-month coast to Mars. Once it arrives in February, the capsule will enter the Martian atmosphere using a heat shield and a parachute to slow the descent before deploying the rover's fancy jetpack to bring it down even slower, and then finally yo-yoing it to the ground all autonomously, mind you. And if that sounds insane, don't worry, you're half right, because in all reality, it's insanely cool. They successfully went through this seven minutes of terror before in 2012 with curiosity. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you, eccentric members and patrons for your continuous support of this channel. You guys keep these videos flowing so others can bask in the excitement of our time. The rest of you can also become members right now by checking out the relevant links in the description below. Whether you choose Patreon or the YouTube membership program, you'll receive even more SpaceX news in your week, as well as other fun content. So join us. Y'all have a nominal weekend, and until our next meeting, Godspeed.